Hi, my name is Israel. I'm going to read over the development manifesto. I have managed to avoid most spoilers. The only thing I've seen that people have spoiled is that six are nerfed, um, which they're opening with here, and melee is dead apparently. So other than that, I don't know anything. I've not seen anything else. And um, alerts are currently turned off as well for those of you watching on Twitch. So let's see. Um, Balance changes in Path of Exile Betrayal. Every league we chose some specific game elements. Cover some changes and reasons for them. Stat stakes. The use of stat stakes has been a feature in Path of Exile for a very long time. Stat stake is an offhand that is not valid to use with skill you're using with dual wielding. You get all the benefits of the stats of the weapon while not having any limitations it might have affecting the use of the skill. You can use a weapon that has attack speed and or damage you want for the skill while the offhand provides excellent stats without its speed or base damaging limiting. Heaven. Want to remove the top bit? Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, this use started off as an interesting gameplay element to use as part of a build, but over a release, a more powerful modifier of some uniques and rare weapons have been added. Power statistics cannot be ignored when planning builds and is stifling other choices, including genuine dual wielding. It's true. <laughs> In 3.5, we're removing the ability to use statistics through the following changes. You will no longer be able to use skills that require a specific weapon equipped if you're dual wielding, and one of your equipped weapons is unsuitable for that skill. Skills that could be used with two weapons but remain hand only when used, now use both weapons when dual wielding. Oh, so Thunder's dual wielding now? Thunder's actual dual wield? And Leap's that? Awkward. I don't think that's a particularly great change. Anyway, let's continue. Um, I can't think of a lot of other ways to nerf it, but anyway. We found that this change that we was important to make skill binds. This doesn't sound like a nerf it for spells at all. Wait, is there not more? Important to make skill binds specific. What? You can now have an entirely different set of skills bound to your main weapons. How does this nerf it for spells, though? Does that not make it insane for Glacial Cascade and BB still? Right! Okay, gotta dual wield my 200% more damage that stakes. Why? What? I'm so confused. I don't get it. Why don't they just like off the numbers or even less quad quad split the numbers like 25 percent of what they are now anyway energy shield that's so weird i can't really get over that this seems like a weird change energy shield recharge is no longer interrupted by non-damage to your life or energy shield for context, yeah, no, this is great. They did talk about this. Eldritch Battery costs you to have 50% less energy shield recharge rate. This change was explored as a way to make it easier for casters to use EB to solve mana issues. One major issue that it doesn't work very well on its own, needing something like Cell South to go along with it. While there were concerns that this might introduce issues with other builds, when tested, it was justified change that was beneficial for a variety of cases. That is really cool. The further change for Eldritch Battery and the energy shield based support builds in general. And uh, more flat energy shield has been added on the tree. Interesting. That could be really cool. Cap on slowing effects. The total amount that you can slow the expiration of an effect on a character through a time slowing mechanism such as Tempest is now 75 from all sources. Time slowing effects are a very powerful defensive tool, limiting time slowing to a cap allows us more flexibility in making content as well as providing more options for giving players time slowing effects. Unique rebalance. The patch notes tomorrow will cover a large number of unique item rebalances. That really cool. That is really cool. Um, some of these are numerical changes, while others are closer to redesigns. Awesome. Imagine if Headhunter gets nerfed. It'd be hilarious. That would be so funny. People would be so angry. Imagine if we have Legacy Headhunters now, like seven. 
Um, the following principles were applied in looking at rebalancing unique items. Any item that drops very rarely should be justified in being that hard to find. Many very rare items have been improved, while few remain more uncommon. Oh, this sounds like a Shavs and a Combs drop. Combs 750 life? Question mark? Unique items that are very... Shavs, maybe buffed. Um, unique items that are acquired through very specific high tier bosses, Elder and Shaper, should be balanced upwards where they were not on par. Void Forge buff? Um, definitely Void Forge buff, right? 100%, right? I don't think anyone disputes that. Um, Vo mm, Void Walker's already quite good. Void Walker's already quite good. It's not used a lot in the current meta, but Void Walker are good boots. In leagues where like projectiles are used a lot, then Void Walker is really fucking nice. You get free pierce. So, Shimron? Nah, Shimron's fine. Rastome? Rastome's already fine too, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it buffed. What else? What's dog shit from bosses right now? Yeah, I was just thinking about boss drops right now. Shaper gloves are like used super much right now. The quiver. The quiver is 100% getting buffed. Maybe the melee ring as well. I don't think the spell ring will get buffed. All the phoenix items. Yeah, chimera claw is definitely getting buffed. Hydro bow getting buffed. 100%. Yeah, the phoenix weapon. The elder gloves, probably. No, Rastom's used a shit ton, dude. I love that item. It's fucking amazing. Super underrated. It's actually really strong. Uber Zero item. A couple of the Splendors are good, but I can see all of them getting buffed. Um... Here you Steph. Steph? Steph's already good too. Like, something not being used a lot doesn't mean it's not great. It'll have to be OP. Um... Unique items that dramatically affect the diversity in an item slot would be addressed either by nerfing excessive power or by looking at what else was available. What are they talking about here? What's that mean? Headhunter? Impulsa? Floorweave? Tombfist? Tombfist, Headhunter, Floorweave, Impulsa. A Lorweave's 100% getting nerfed. I would nerf Lorweave. Lorweave's bonkers for how easy it is to get. Lorweave's literally... You know what would be cool? Lorweave should have like a lower version that you got from the rings and then a faded version to what we have now. Like a pretty rare faded version. That would be... That would be a good one in my opinion. Like the current Lorweave is fucking bonkers. For 60 fucking unique rings. 100% should have a faded version though. Like, it's one of the best chests in the game. It's, like, the easiest chest to get as well. Um, I don't feel like the I don't feel like the current version's OP, though. I don't feel like the current version's broken. It's just broken for, for how easy it is to get. You know, it's, like... Power is fine as long as, you know, it's not, like, fucking 60C. Um... Why not yet be addressed? Okay, cool. Passed on while looking at unique item balance. Some items offered triggered effects how their cooldowns reduced. It was difficult to do this without also looking at other cast on crit and cast on milk. Osprey buff? Mjolnir buff? Oh, but did not damage diversity could be made more rare. Oh, cool. I wonder which one they're talking about here actually. Items which were relatively very strong but did not damage diversity. What's really strong but not used a lot? Uh. No, head under fucks diversity. Surfies? Surfies not too bad for diversity, except for delving. What else? Tinker uh, skin? Nah. Duffles. Yeah? Skyforth and Vertex? 
They're not gonna make Skyforth more rare. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Read your sentence, dude. Make Skyforth more rare? Fuck you, Omega Law. Um. So I'm guessing both Cosprey's and Mjolnir are getting buffed, but not. I wonder, are they gonna be even faster than Cast on Crit? Abras is already super rare too. Quom's already super rare. Ventors? Yeah, wouldn't be surprised if Ventors was more rare. Poet's Pen should be rarer. I think Poet's Pen is more likely to get nerfed though. Anyway, let's continue. Archetypes. One of the approaches we use in patching development skills and making changes around. Did I get chat up on screen? For, for doing this. I could do that actually. Uh, but it's like, it's so thin on my screen. It doesn't matter. Um, Developing skills and making changes around some specific playstyles. is centered around the concept of having build archetypes. We make a specific build, add features and balance changes around that build. While some players are expected to end up in the archetype, we also want tools to be useful in existing builds and to allow other builds to share elements with it. The three archetypes were a cold based dot caster, a higher hunt based caster on a new brands, and champion based melee based on axe and sword steel skills with impale supported by new skill type banners. Hmm. Yeah, I can zoom in a bit more. Cold based casters has led to the new skill Winter Orb, rework of Arctic Breath and Ice Spare, and adjustments to Ice Nova and Vortex. The new. <sighs> I fucking hate Vortex. Stuff like that. Like, unless they make it kind of broken OP, it's like never going to be worth bothering with it. Like, a skill like Vortex, by definition, needs to be overpowered, in my opinion, to work because it's such a hassle. Even if it's like 10% better, you're still going to use another skill because, you know, you have to, like, Frostbolt and then more tanks. Like, if you want to use it that way, I mean. Anyway. This caster archetype has led to a new number of changes on items, the non-passive tree, or the passive tree and the occultist tree in particular. Added cold damage over time multiplier, non-ailment chaos damage on new modified fighters. On the passive tree and on the occultist. The valleys and various... I'm already seeing Whispering Ice Occultists. I'm already seeing it. Yeah, I'll read the meme patch notes too. As well as the new brand skill, the archetype based on them has led to changes on the Hierophant and already had knock-on effects for totems. A number of totem nodes now also offer benefits for brands. The Hierophant node, Ritual of Awakening, no longer grants plus one to maximum number of summoned totems. Heh. Instead, it causes skills that would summon a totem to summon two totems instead and grant 3% more damage per totem. Huh? That's gonna go so fast for racing? That's gonna be so fast for racing. That's the first totem node. If, if Ark, like, I mean, I'm expecting an Ark nerf, but if Ark is still usable, slapping up double Ark totems? They're basically forcing you to use the new totem support skill. No, but this is built in. You can probably use both. Oh, it is the second? Shit, I thought it was the first one. Names, dude. Oh, wait. You read it wrong? And you read it wrong? What? How? It no longer grants plus one maximum summon totems, instead it now causes skills that would summon a totem to summon two totems instead. How am I reading it wrong? Instead, instead of giving plus one to max, it summons two now. How am I reading it wrong? Please explain. How, how is that wrong? I'm confused. It's not plus one totems, you summon, you just summon two. That's literally what I just said. 
That's like literally what I just said. That you summon two when you... It's like spell echo for a totem. How am I reading this wrong? How can you summon two if your max is one? Because the first one is plus one. What? Or the fucking side note on the tree. That? Anyway, moving on. So I am reading it right. Okay, good to know. Additional totems are available from other sources and players will have a number of options for totem builds as well as being able to explore the new brand skills. Oh, Mr. The champion now has a strong impale build. Has changes to support it. The Catonic Slam has been completely annihilated and nobody will be using it, putting any worry about that to rest. While shattering Steel Lancing Steel, War Banner and Dread Banner might be useful skills. Um, but what about self-casting? Oh, I should have like memed up the entire fucking thing like I did last time. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Emily. But what about self-casting? In the last few days, the community has been very keen for news for casters who don't rely on totems and triggers, which is often referred to as self-casting. Not to worry, there is no buffs coming. Self-casting has not been a specific focus on the set files for 3.5, and you don't want to rush to, to try to rush in further big changes without extensive testing. Betrayal does include some changes for various things associated with self-casting. We're really just saying this, but we have designed the new cold skills to be aimed at self-casters, for example. However, in practice, it is probably completely shit and nobody will end up using it except snowflakes. We are sure you'll find interesting build choices of many kinds in Betrayal. There are already some balance changes planned underway for 3.6, and we expect to keep a good eye on gameplay during Betrayal to see how our past the adjustment. Please don't flame us too much on Reddit. Things will happen in the future. Anyway, hopefully people enjoyed the manifesto readings. Try to die, less than I do.